what's happening if you're here with me right now let me know that you are here in chat welcome tonight we're actually going to be painting a, a little pumpkin character so if you're in the mood to do a little drawing and a little bit of painting uh, this class is for you if you're new here my name is Paige I'm the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at gumption and Weekly, I do a little online class here with you uh, to teach you how to paint certain things and really just to have fun with you and to help get your creative juices going. So if you're so inclined to check out uh, what's happening over on this channel, you're always welcome to go to the calendar and check it out and see what's happening. Uh, next week, we will be doing a paint club um, class. So that will be happening on Patreon, and that's a Zoom class. Uh, and so if you're interested in that sort of a thing, you can check out patreon.com forward slash gumption. A little bit of news uh, this, this month or this week is that I'm going to be having surgery here in about a week and a half. And so I am going to be down for a couple of weeks. Uh, and so if you're interested in being a part of the painting here on YouTube, just check the calendar and I will be good about updating that to let you know kind of if I'm able to paint with you or not. I would expect that about mid-November I should be able to uh, be painting live with you again, uh, but we'll just have to kind of see. So definitely next week's Patreon is going to be happening. So um, be stay tuned for that. Uh, let's talk about this class a little bit. So like I said, uh, we are going to be doing a little pumpkin character and we're going to be drawing this guy as well as painting. And then we're going to be using pen and ink um, or pen, I should say, as a last step. So if you have a black pen somewhere, grab that and we will be having fun with that. This class is about an hour long, so if you have about an hour, uh, know that it'll take about that long, maybe a little quicker this time. And if you have questions or you're a frequent uh, flyer here, go ahead and let me know that you're here in chat. I always like to know that my buddies are hanging out with me. And before I forget, I just want to say thanks to my patrons uh, that are part of my sticker club and my paint club members. Uh, sticker club stuff went out, I think, last week. So you should be seeing that if you haven't gotten it already. Thank you guys. You helped make this possible on this channel. And so I appreciate your support. Looks like we have a comment here. Yes, it's so nice to see you, Laurel. I'm so glad that you're tuning in tonight. So without further ado, let's get started drawing. And this really is, we don't have anything to trace tonight. You're going to be drawing along with me and I think it'll be fun for you. So let's switch our camera up here. All right. So you can kind of see part of this. We'll kind of scoot this back a little bit. So this is kind of where we're going to start here. And let's see if we can focus in here. Really? I want you to create your own character, but this is a great starting point for you to get going. And so I just have a couple pencils here. It doesn't really matter what you have. Just lightly sketch. I think for my next character, I'm gonna make, we'll make her a little bit uh, a different shape. So I'm gonna make her a little more vertical. And honestly, working kind of small like this for this class kind of, um, kind of is ha handy for my time frame here. So that's kind of why it's so small. So I'm just going to do an oval shape, a round shape, and then I'm going to do the witch's hat. And because I have a shorter area here, I'm just going to kind of draw the centering line of the hat and kind of where it might flop. So then you can kind of create this triangle. Let's see, I'll zoom in a little here. You can kind of see I'm lightly sketching a triangle here. Maybe a little part of the brim, making an oval. If you want to draw through, you can certainly do that too. 
just a triangle and then I'm gonna have it flopped over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's kind of off kilter a little bit, that's even better. If you gotta turn your page upside down, do it. Anything to help kind of assist your drawing. So then for my pumpkin, I'm gonna kind of do a little center line here, kind of where I want the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. This should be fun for our kids that are tuning in and painting with us. Give you a little bit of creativity. So for the mouth, I like to include teeth because I always think that's kind of fun for a pumpkin. So I'm going to include a tooth down below and then maybe a couple up here. You can shape your teeth however you want to there. But this is, I think actually this, this gal needs a space in between her teeth. Give her a little bit of character. Of course, I'm using a kneaded eraser, which is the best kind for using with watercolor because it doesn't um, lift up your paper. So if you're just starting out, that's a great inexpensive thing to invest in is a kneaded eraser. They come in a square and you can find them pretty much at most art supply stores. Okay, so we've got our smile in, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm gonna just do a little triangle for the nose. And then um, I'm going to do like a half moon or half circle shape here. Sorry, I'm going to. Excuse me. Hopefully you didn't hear me cough in there, but um, just going to do this kind of half moon shape. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. You might hear Lucy, the cat, over at my door. She's kind of mad because uh, I haven't fed her yet. She is a foodie for sure. Then you can see I have this half moon shape. Then I'm going to just do kind of this area where we'd have the iris. And there you kind of have your eyes there. And I am going to erase out this corner area. We might have to round that out when we're painting, but. And I can erase some of these lines. I think I also want to kind of put in some eyebrows here for fun. I mean, since we can. And then I really enjoy uh, pumpkins that kind of have these shapes here uh, where we have a little bit of separation. So I'm going to do that for this pumpkin. And it also gives me the opportunity to do a little bit of a chin there. And you can kind of connect these at the top. So you can do the same thing at the top if you want. Really the point is just to have fun. This is kind of a, uh, I don't think that we'll have a class around uh, Halloween because I'll have just had surgery. So Let's zoom out here a little bit. So we can kind of get our Halloween on a little bit early.
And if you're just joining, feel free to start sketching too. And then I can kind of connect to these lines. Another thing I think might be fun for this uh, pumpkin is to do like a little mole or something. Some, you know, some of these pumpkins are, uh, they have these little warty, warty things on them. We just want to give this pumpkin a little bit of personality. I could probably even make this brim a little bit bigger, but we'll kind of just get started here. So I'm going to erase out anything that I don't think needs to be there, like my center lines here. And if I roll up my eraser here, I can kind of pick up any extra lead. And we can get to mixing our paint. Okay, you guys ready to have some fun? Hopefully you are. So I'm gonna bring over my small kit here. Take this out of here, oops. Some paint is still wet in here, as you can see from my thumb. <laughs> Oh, my other thumb's getting it too. That must be some paint that I made, maybe. Okay. So, of course, I'm going to be using an orange color. Now, if you want to mix your own color, you can mix a yellow and a red, and you can create your own orange. I have this favorite that I use that is a transparent pyrrole orange. Sorry, just trying to clean up my hands a little bit here. Uh, and I think I'm pronouncing pyrrole wrong. I think some people pronounce it pyrrole. Anyway, it's a really beautiful orange color. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm just going to, we're going to mix up a little bit of that here. And you can kind of see how vibrant that is. This is a core watercolor color. And I am not sponsored by them or anything. I just really enjoy golden paints. And I find that they have a consistency in their pigments, whether it's watercolor or their acrylic paints and I kind of enjoy that to be able to use them across the board. So I think for this one I'm going to start with this orange color first and I'm I'm trying to add enough water in there that it's a little bit watered down. I may do I want a bigger no we'll just stick with this one stick with this kind of medium sized brush here. And I'm just gonna work from the top down. And I'm gonna try to move this bead of water around here. I don't want it to leave marks. I had that trouble here when I first did our sample here, and I know better. When you move the bead around, this bead of water here, it helps you not leave marks. But you gotta move fast, and I can tell you here in my Idaho studio, um, Paint dries pretty fast. So you can see it's already kind of drying over here, I think. So I'm just trying to move it. I 
a little bit more here and try to kind of round it up here. This is definitely something that takes skill. And of course you have to have the appropriately sized brush. So if you're using too small of a brush, sometimes it makes it a little bit hard, but you can see now that's a pretty good job of managing to do a one solid color here. So I feel success there. And so I'm just gonna let that dry. And you guys can paint along. I see some of you are here with me. So I'm actually gonna get out the hair dryer to speed this along. You keep painting and uh, I'll be right back here. Okay. And I think too, we can now, um, you're probably still painting away here. But what we've done here is we've created a nice base so we can add some of the, we can kind of layer some more uh, color over the top of it and create some, uh, some accentuated areas essentially. But we'll do a little bit, we'll mix up some yellow here. Now you can see, this is a tip that I have learned somewhere on YouTube or somewhere. You can see, I don't know if you can see this, hopefully you can. In my Hansa yellow here, I have some green uh, color there because I mixed a blue in there at some point. And so a good rule of thumb, actually, this is a great tip. Sometimes on your palette, if you have a bigger palette, you can have a couple of yellows on your palette and that way of the same yellow. So I'd have another one of these somewhere else. And you can have one that's for mixing greens where you might dip into it when you're dealing with blue and one that you would dip in when you're making an orange. So you're not getting green paint when you don't intend to get green paint. I kind of like that idea, especially if you have kind of a, a regular, more traditional palette. So this is a Hansa yellow. If you have a lemon yellow, uh, th that would be good to use here. And we're just going to fill in these areas that would be our eyes and mouth and nose where we would have light coming out of the pumpkin. I'm just going to do a quick little fill in here. I have a, a very small brush here, you can see. And this is handy for these little paintings and little areas. Now for this painting, I've chosen to uh, do the pen part after the fact, so you don't necessarily have to have a waterproof pen. You just have to make sure that your painting is gonna be dry to get that done. And we'll be using, I believe it's called a Molotov uh, black liner, but you can use any old black pen that you've got. And I don't know if my friend Colin is on here tonight or not, but uh, I did a quick little video here today uh, for any of you who need to add a little more light into your life or rather your garage. Um, 
Colin clued me into some great lights for my garage because I'm going to be painting up there. I'm going to have an oil painting studio in my garage. And uh, he clued me into these great lights that um, are amazing. They're super bright. And so if you have any interest in working in your garage and getting uh, better light, uh, I have a video that I just uploaded today that you might be interested in. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to mix a purple for this hat. And I'm going to use ultramarine blue. And whatever red I have on this palette here, I think I have a, a handmade paint that I made that's a red here. So we'll probably use that. We'll see what we can mix here. So just a blue and a red. Whatever you got. To get a nice kind of lovely purple. And don't be afraid to throw any questions you might have that might arise here as we're painting along. I'm going to see if I can switch out my brush for a smaller brush here. Not sure what size this would be, probably a four. And sometimes it's easier to paint upside down, so I'm going to do that. This looks kind of like a blue, more blue purple. But again, we're gonna just move this bead around. This is pretty light, but we can always add more to it if we need to. So I don't have a ton of water in there. So now I've got a little bit more so you can see this bead and we'll just kind of move it along this way. Try to move at a pretty good pace and tap into our paint as we're going along. You don't want to tap into water because that will change the consistency of your paint and definitely make it splotchy for you. So we'll just kind of move from side to side here, move that bead. Okay. And there you go. Again, a nice even tone as you're moving. As you can see, because I've mixed these two colors, this is granulating really nice, which means that it's uh, creating some texture here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this with hairdryer too while you guys are painting. And so I will be right back. Keep painting and I'll see you in a minute. All right, hopefully I'm not going too fast for you there. Okay. So now we have our base colors down. And you know what I totally forgot was to create this little stem business that's happening here. I totally forgot to do that. 
So I'm going to draw this in here. We'll just have it outside of of our pumpkin. Kind of little leaves in the shapes of hearts. Okay. So excited to get started. I forgot part of what I was supposed to be doing here. So again, I'm going to hit this with my kneaded eraser just to lighten it a little bit. And then, of course, we can mix a green to mix for these little leaves. So, of course, we're going to hit a yellow. And I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue. Make a nice little green here. And the more blue you add, kind of the darker you'll get it here. So I'm just going to paint those in. So I'm not sure if Sam's on tonight. Sam is, um, Sam had a, an accident and broke his wrist. So I just want to give him a shout out and hope he's doing okay. Seems like everybody in the family will have been in the hospital this year. <laughs> but it might be a good year to get all that stuff out of the way. all things considered. Okay, so we've done our base la layer for our leaves. Now we can start adding a little bit of character to our pumpkin. So I think what I'm gonna start doing is kind of shaping around the pumpkin so we can start shading in these areas and kind of accentuating them a little bit. I kind of darkened around the eyes here and uh, the teeth. So I'm going to just start doing a second layer of the same orange. You can clean up any lines you need to, but you can see just one layer there. It starts to you can zoom in here a little bit. You can start seeing that show up there. So. And if you need to darken your orange, you can always add more pigment or you could add a more red to this mixture if you want to. I may add a little bit of this red to see what it does here. Feel free to turn her upside down. If you need to soften any edges, you can do that. Just have fun with it and make it your own. 
kind of in this is an area where you can kind of start accentuating features so our little smile lines we may need to to kind of do this process more than once or if you have more pigment in your in with your watercolor you can do that too I might add a little bit because I just feel like we aren't concentrated enough here. Oh, there we go. Now we've got some pigment here. It's kind of funny, oh, you know, artists talk about the ugly stage in painting and sometimes that's really true. I'm, I'm working on a, an oil painting right now. It's kind of a, a painting that's been in the process for a couple of years and it's kind of in that ugly stage where I'm still working out proportions and that kind of a thing. So Give yourself grace as you work on things and if you feel like you're struggling, you know everybody kind of has that point where things look a little a wonky. So I'm kind of always kind of in between water and pigment. I feel like I have a nice ratio here. As far as pigment goes. Maybe put some little shadows here for my warts so they don't totally disappear. And, you know, I think of something fun that might go along with kind of how this one looks here is to create some little splatters. So I've got my little tiny brush that I'm dipping into some pigment. I'm going to kind of cover my hat here a little bit. And then I'm going to take another brush and just kind of do some... gentle splattering here you can also um, take your brush if you have a small brush like i do you can kind of dot on some dots i just think it helps kind of make give it texture and kind of make it fun like freckles kind of on your little pumpkin. So you can keep working on your pumpkin. Uh, you can see that I did a few layers here with some more intense color. And so feel free to kind of do that. I'm going to move on to the hat again. Just to kind of move things along. And we'll see here if we can use this mixture kind of draw our line through here to create our brim and then we can lift out some highlights here so if I take a clean brush and I kind of scrub in here then I can take my paper towel blot and you can lift lift your watercolor a little bit. We can create some, some folds. 
and some kind of highlights here. You can also do this with your pumpkin if you want. Might even do this along the brim. This is a, a little bit wide of a brush for this area, but that is okay. Just have fun with it. Just helps kind of inform the shape a little. And then if you want to go in with a darker color, I think I have some Payne's Gray here. Let's see is that paint. Oh, that's Payne's Gray. Okay. So I'm just going to add that to my purple a little bit to kind of darken it. And I can kind of butt this shadow up here. Just kind of gives your hat a little bit of character. That seems like a little too dark here. And if you want, you can kind of do in the corners here. If you find that you're feeling like you messed something up, you can always fix it in the pen stage here. Just have fun. Just have fun. Okay. So one thing that we can do is we can make this feel like there's more light in the mouth and uh, kind of give it an ambience. You can see I have this lighter area here. So we started with this um, really light yellow, but then what we can do is we can add a little bit of orange to that, or you can use something like an Indian yellow. We'll see what this does. I might need a little more pigment in here. And we can hit kind of the corner of this mouth a little bit. And you can just soften those edges by dipping your brush in water, kind of tapping it and then softening the edges. We'll kind of do that for the eyes too. And I'm gonna just darken this green a little bit. I 
and kind of define these leaves too. Okay, where are we at? We're at 41 minutes. All right, let's see. We have a comment here. Ah, nice to see. Um, all right, five more weeks in a cast. Man, it's hard being in a cast, right, Laurel? That's a bummer, but I'm glad that he is doing good. I mean, I never broke a bone as a kid. I always thought it would be cool to break a bone. <laughs> I don't know if that's really the case, especially in your guys' case where you're dealing with wrists and things. Uh, it seems like it is my convenient. I'm curious to know how he's doing writing because I think it was his writing arm. But hopefully he's doing, he's adjusting. Maybe he will be amb ambidextrous. Did I can never say it. Ambidextrous. That would be a cool byproduct. Of the Broken Bone Adventure. So I'm just kind of uh, needling this a little bit more. I don't really need to be doing that, but you know, why not? It's a little fun. So I think probably we're at a stage where we can actually start using our pins. So I'm going to, let's see, what do I have here? I have a 0.3 millimeter and a 0.4. So let's look at this on a piece of paper. They're just slightly, I'm going to zoom in here. One is a little bit thicker than the other. That's this one. I kind of want a, a thicker pin. So let's look and see here. All right, so this is a 0.5, so it should be a little thicker. So one of the tricks in illustration that they teach it in art school is about line width and Things that are more defining shapes, like if you have an overlapping shape, like we have this overlapping shape, uh, you want to do it with a little bit thicker if it's sitting in front of something else. And some of the detail lines would be thinner. So I'm just going to take this 0.5 millimeter and I'm going to outline my pumpkin. Now this is kind of the fun part where you can sort of have fun. That's a little redundant. This is the part where you can kind of get creative and play with your, with making, creating texture. And if you need to double up on your line, you can do that too. I'm gonna zoom out here. So now I'm gonna use our 0.3 and I can do some of our internal lines.
Now, if you don't have different uh, line widths of pins, that's just fine. Use what you have. No need to buy anything either that you don't need. And uh, you can use the thinner pen for some of these lines. One thing that I did for this drawing was I created these little sketchy lines and dots to create some texture. So you can choose to do that or not. Uh, it's just kind of fun. I enjoyed kind of having to kind of let go and just really have some fun with the pen because I don't do that very frequently. So I'm just kind of creating these marks and dots. I got a thumbs up on Facebook. Thanks to my friends who are on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. And, I, and you can hatch, do some cross hatching uh, or hatching that uh, it's kind of, let's see, let's show you. If you don't know what hatching is, you can have lines going in the same direction like this. And that will help create shading or you can cross hatch like this. And we'll do a little bit of that tonight for our little pumpkin. This pumpkin has some warts. You don't want to lose those warts. And then I will hatch the eye just a little bit. And maybe the corners here of the mouth. And let's see, I'm going to zoom out here. All right. And you can start moving on to your other parts. So with this thinner pen, I'm going to just kind of define my leaves here. And you can do, you know, some hatching for your leaves if you want. It's kind of fun once you get started. And just remember, you don't have, this doesn't have to be perfection. So now we'll kind of move into our hat. So when I started doing watercolor again, after being uh, away from it for a while, I started with the, the pen and watercolor combo. And it's a great combination to, to do urban sketching with. As well, sometimes it's it makes it easier because watercolor is a harder medium to pick up. It can be very intimidating. And sometimes when you're doing a little bit of pen and watercolor, it's less intimidating. So you do you, you do what you like, the color combinations and um, 
medium combos that you like. So I'm just going to do a little bit of hatching, kind of directional hatching here. Up to my highlight there. Can do a little cross hatching here in the the corners. We actually got snow here, and I imagine if you're in Jackson Hole, you got snow too. But uh, was it yesterday? One of these days, my week just is kind of going all together. But. Uh, I am ready for winter weather, I think. I think I want to go snowshoeing once once I'm cleared to do such a thing. So you can see I'm just hatching underneath where we'd have these shadows set up here. Have fun with it. And I'm, I think before I let you go, I'm going to, you know, I forgot to put a little blush on my uh, pumpkin and I'm going to kind of noodle this. So if you have questions or comments, um, throw them in chat here. I'm going to throw a little opera pink in here and because my pens are waterproof uh that's why i can paint over them so hopefully yours are waterproof too if you decide to to paint over the top you can always kind of paint around your pen if you need to I feel like I really am enjoying the, the intense, more intense color of this pumpkin. So that's why I am I'm going back in. I was playing it safe there. That's what's great about starting kind of lighter is that you can keep going back in. Whereas sometimes when you start with too much pigment right off the bat, it can be kind of problematic sometimes. And for any of you guys who are Adele fans, have you seen that she's come out with her latest album? I'm super excited about that. I love Adele. I love her work. You can see I got my, some of my ink there. It's bleeding a little bit.
We'll see if this bleeds or not. Oh, looked like it's pretty good there. Let's do some eyebrows. All right, I think I like that a little bit better. All right, so just a reminder that uh, next week we will have um, Patreon. Our Patreon peeps are going to be painting on Zoom. So if you are tuned into the Patreon feed, you can... Uh, actually tune in to that. I'm going to include all that information in Patreon for you. So uh, if you're, if you want to get on the bandwagon, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash gumption. Um, and then we'll kind of see, we won't have class on YouTube that following week. So in two weeks time, I guess not next week, but the following week, we won't have a live stream and then we'll kind of play it by ear as I'm recuperating. So uh, just stay uh, in tune with the calendar and I'll be making sure to update that so you are in the know of what's happening. If you want to learn more about me on social media, you can find me at a couple different places. Let's switch that up to this one. Uh, so this is where you can find me again. There's Patreon, but you can find me on Facebook or Instagram over at I Have Gumption. And that really concludes our class tonight. I'll give you a couple uh, moments here to see if you uh, have any questions. And you can also subscribe to the channel over on YouTube. I feel really lucky that uh, I have so many of you guys that are tuned into the channel. So thank you for supporting the channel and being a part of that. And keep in mind, only nice people paint. This is probably one of my favorite things from the Bob Ross uh, movie that we watched recently. He said that in one of his, on one of his shows. So I really like that. So only nice people paint. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Laurel. I'm glad that you guys are still painting. And this is kind of a cool project that you can just really run wild with. You could put your cat a uh, cat in there uh, and with a witch's hat or whatever and have a whole slew of pumpkins. These might be great little cards to give away to your uh, friends for Halloween. And I'll definitely keep you updated about my surgery. I definitely, it'll be two weeks from, well, it'll be not next Monday, but the following Monday. So I'll be out for a little while, but I'll definitely keep you in, uh, tuned in and I appreciate you being here. So thank you everyone. I hope you have a nice weekend and evening actually. So, uh, thanks for tuning in and I will see you soon. Keep painting, keep creating and thanks. And I'll see you later. Maybe.